Hello everyone. So, you know the drill here. We're going to do the next question in the lead code march uh, challenges. The good thing about this this question is that this is a very popular problem coin change. Uh, most people uh, in, at least in the program in the um, competition world, it's it's a very popular problem. So, I already have seen this multiple times. So, I'm just going to go over how to solve it and um, let's see. So let me see if I remember this. This is um, a basic uh, dynamic programming problem or instruction, not basic, but a very instructional dynamic program problem. And the way I solve this is I just do a standard, I first create a, uh, a long solution that is gonna time out and then I make it I, I memoize so for me it's just the easiest route so let me just show you how to do that we're gonna get the coins and we get the amount and then we're just gonna say okay well if the amount is less than zero we're gonna just return zero or negative one actually we want to know if it goes over. If the amount equals equals zero, then we're going to return zero. And then we want to get some big number here. And we want to try to minimize the amount of coins we're using. So for coins, in coins, what we're going to do is we're going to say self.dfs coins amount minus c. So this is going to recurse each time the amount is subtracted by the current coin. So in this particular case, first case is 11 minus one, second case is 11 minus two, and then 11 minus five and so on and so forth. And whoever gets to zero first is the winner. So, uh, so here if V is greater than negative one, then I know I'm doing something here, which is Trying, trying to minimize the amount of coins we're using. So here, like so, return one plus m. And that should give us like the basics. Uh, well, one thing is, if it's negative, then there's no solution. So in cases like this one, where it'll always be negative because you can't make a three out of uh, only two coins um, then w w that will always return a negative so we want to account for that and if v is equal to negative one then we'll return negative one however or actually it's going to equal to the maximum if, if that is the case so what I'm going to do is if it is equal to the maximum, the maximum being one, how many zeros, six zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, plus one, because of the plus one right here. And then if that is not the case, then we turn the actual value. So this should be right, but you can see that this will this will time out if I just turn this one in as it is, because um, if you think about it, every time you subtract, that's another branching out, right? So in this case, in every in every state, you're going to multiply by three. So basically, this is three. Um, 3n which is exponential so this is going to time limit as soon as the number gets big so the way we optimize this is we use uh, dynamic programming so we're going to say self.memo where we're going to store things that we've already pre-computed so here we're going to say memo I've already commuted 0 which is equal to 0 and then over here I've already computed the amount, whatever that amount was, 
as equal to 1 plus m. And then over here, right before we do any kind of expensive work, we first have to check if we've already computed that in the past. If we have, then we say return self memo amount. And that should make things a lot faster. Um, same answer, but just way faster. Yep, so that's a very popular problem, and that would be my approach to that. I know there is a array approach, and um, I mean, I don't really, it's not as intuitive for me to come up with that. This is a lot more intuitive for me to come up with, so I choose this. So yeah, next time.